Hello everyone, my name is Elena and I'm lead product designer at Poly AI. And I actually one of 20 people on this planet who loves creating icons. Yes, I am the one of them. And I might say that yes, you always can buy a set of icons we used existing, but 99% of chance that your product requires you to create at least one custom icon that does not exist on the set that you just bought. And here is a video that can help you to create the best possible icons. And since I couldn't find any AI tools that can create or help us to create an icon, this is still very, very design crafted we managed to do on our own. But if you know any products, any AI tools that can help to create icons, please drop a link on the comment section and I will definitely take a look. In this video, you will learn about different approaches, how to create your icon and also different drawing techniques that can help you with it and how to use icons on Figma and export them like a pro. So let's dive in. When you start a new project, you need to decide will you use a single size icon and scale it down or will you manually optimize each size? To make comparison more obvious, I will use this set of icons, arrows, envelope, or mail, and duplicate or copy. Obviously, I need to make sure that my pixel grid is turned on because I need to see pixel grid to make sure my icons are pixel perfect. And also, time to time, I will enable and disable pixel preview. Here is the pixel grid. How do you pick sizes for your icons? It depends on your product platform and spacing system, actually. Most common icon sizes 12, 16, 20, 32, and 24 pixels. If you're using an 8 pixel grid system, multiply of 8 actually make life easier. That it means that you can use 16, 24, 32 pixels, and others. Personally, I start with 24 pixels and 16 pixels icons and then I adjust or redraw the other as needed. And I might say there is no right or wrong size of your icons. It's more like, is it work for your product, for your design or not? So you can pick any size that works for you and your design, but I will go with the sizes 12, 16, 20, 24 and 32 to make this comparison more obvious. I also analyzed other design systems um, of the most popular products and I might say that the most popular sizes are 24 pixels and 16 pixel size icons. Let's start exploring this approach with scale down icons approach. Let's say we start with uh, 32 pixels icons and to create this icon I'm using a frame that helps me visualize boundaries. I treat it like a safe area. I prefer frames over groups or squares because they're easy to manage in Figma and it's more like my habit. As you can see, I finished creating an arrow icon and I need to ensure that I have only one path or like union selection or flatten and also this icon should scale to make sure that one size icon can be scaled down. And here is the biggest pros of this approach of having one size of the icon that can be scaled down. This approach can help you to save time. But the cons of this approach are the width of the line that differ from size to size because you scale down everything and pixel and perfection. Um, this is where manually optimized sizes comes in. Now I'm going to redesign the same icon for each size from scratch. And yes, it will take more time and you will see the difference. As you can see, I start from 32 pixel size icon and then go to 24 pixel size icon, but it doesn't mean that you have to do the same. This approach allows you to create icons from any size, uh, whether it's the smallest in the middle or the biggest icon. This is like the biggest advantage of this approach that you can start from any size. And again, I decided to use all these five sizes just to show the difference between this approach and one size icon approach. 
but for your project you can pick as many steps of size for your icon set or it can be just one icon size or two for example Now it is time to compare these two approaches and I need to turn on Pixel Preview 1X to see the, how the reality will look like for this icon. Of course I scaled it so you can see how blurry edges can be but in reality when you look on this on these icons on 100% scale they look better. But now you can see that for manually scaled icons they are more fat and thick and now let me place them together so you can compare easier and as you can see one sized icons are at the bottom and if you compare each of them with each other they look different and for manually sized icons you can see that arrows look different from each other as well this is actually pretty common for this approach, it's just because I had to recreate the same icon from scratch again and again, this is why they look different. And here are pros and cons for each of this approach, so you can decide what approach is best for your project, product and design system. What do you think is the best approach, or maybe what approach you like the most? Please drop a comment below. Now it's time to dive in into different ways of creating icons. First is preform, read base, safe area only, and key language. Preform is what I just created. You draw by feel, great for big expressive icons, but not for small UI screen sizes. Safe area way of creation keeps spacing consistent inside of frames, it helps with alignment in UI. I did it unintentionally, but basically the main idea of this approach, you keep in a few pixels from each side of the frame and call it safe area. The main idea of having safe area is that you cannot start finish on have any colored pixels on this area. Grid-based approach is the most strict ones because it makes you to snap everything to the pixel grid super sharp and clean. My favorite actually, but it's really hard to make it happen because you can use only diagonal lines like 45 degrees and it's hard to use circles because they may not be super pixel perfect. So yeah, it's a lot of rules that you need to follow to make sure that your icons are pixel perfect. And Keyline Grid used mainly in many design systems, especially material or human interface guidelines from Apple, helps with visual balancing, especially between circles, squares, and angled icons. And you probably saw this some sort of Keyline Grid in Apple icons uh, for the app. So yeah, it's pretty popular and it's mainly for visual optimization and optical optimization for every shape of your icon. The main idea of this optical optimization that, for example, square, they have angles, this is why they look bigger, this is why we need to make circles a bit bigger. This is why for this key language we need to make squares a bit smaller and this circle a bit bigger, so then they will have the same visual Wait. And I will do the same approach for tall icons and wide icons so they can look like the same icon set and visually balanced. Now I will also fix my icon to make it more visually balanced and be able to fit in this grid line. That was for one size icon creating approach. Now we will repeat the same for manually optimized icons. Manually optimized and resized icons requires for me to adjust safe area for each of these sizes and also set up key language for each size as well.
As you can see, I also made safe area smaller on the smallest sizes of the icons because I also need to compensate. And since these icons are really small, I need to make sure that they have enough space to be readable. As I mentioned before, I open combined pixel grid and keyline grid and safe area to get icons that are both technically perfect and optically balanced. And since we have that many ways of icon creation, feel free to combine them or try to find the ways that work the best for any specific icons. Since my goal is for you to help to pick the approach that works for you the best, your opinion should be objectified. This is why I will add a few more icons so you can compare them with two different approaches and different ways of creating icons so you can pick thing that worked the best or thing that is your favorite. And since I have arrow right, I will add arrow left and I will use keyline green for it. As you probably noticed, I use a bit of visual compensation for this icon as well. And let me explain. I move the tip of the arrow a bit to the other side and I enlarge the tail from other side to make sure that the visual width and visual center of the icon on the right position and it's not like heavier on, on the one side and lighter on the other side. Now let me create the same icons but with less balanced visual center. So now I will give up on visual optimization and visual compensation. So I will just follow the grid lines and just recreate the icon. I wonder, do you see the difference between left hand side icon and right hand side icon? Drop a comment if you notice something. Now it's time for me to continue with envelope or mail icon and copy or duplicate icon. And I will try to make them as pixel perfect as possible. And now I will repeat the same actions for each size of the manually optimized icon creation approach. This set is ready to compare, let's turn on pixel preview and see how it looks like. You see it's pretty pixel perfect, there are a few imperfections but it can be fixed if I would have more time. Now to make sure that it is easy to compare each of these approaches, I place them all together and also I scale down all one sized icons, so you just can compare them. And as I noticed, I removed one icon just because arrows look the same. And now you can compare these two approaches and see how the same icon can look differently in different sizes, even if you just scale it down or when you created the icon manually. Please drop a comment if you use other approaches of icon creation. Whether you picked one or another approach, it's time for us to explore other options of how to store this icon and manage them on Figma. So first of all, I'm going to create one more page on the same Figma file called it icon. Actually, you can use not the same Figma file, you can even create one more file just for icons only, but I decided to keep everything on the same Figma file. Now I also prepare these icons for the next steps and remove the background for each of these frames. And also I need to name this icon properly. You can see that I use command R or control R shortcut. It's just easier for me to rename using this shortcut instead of rename everything manually.
As a first step, I decided to rename all these icons and then create components, but you can do from like other order of the actions, it doesn't matter really. But now you can see that I use the name of each icon, for example, arrow, and then I add the size of the icon. This is one of the approaches that you can use for naming and storing your icons on Figma. There are two more approaches of naming and storing icons and managing the hierarchy of this icon, so I will show it. Here I'm going to rename the same icons and place in the side of the icon at the beginning of the name. Regarding the component set in the middle, I'm not going to rename any of them. I will just use this component set and create them as a variant or component set and also add sizes as a variant to this component set. As you're probably aware, it's better to use icons as components because if you use any element more than once, then it's definitely the biggest sign that you need to create this element as component. The same thing for icons. And I just help you to keep your design consistent. As I mentioned before, I'm just adding size as a variant option for my component set here. Let me place this icon so we can compare them and you can decide what approach is the best for you. On the icon set on the left hand side you can see the group with the name of the icon and also drop down with multiple sizes. This is because I added the size of the icon after the name of the icon after slash. For the icon set in the middle you have two drop downs, one with sizes and second one with the name of the icon. And the right hand side icon set is grouped by the size of the icon, then you have a drop down with the name of the icon. This is because I placed the size of the icon at the beginning of the name of the icon. Each of these three approaches have its own pros and cons, and you need to pick what approach would work best for you. And if you picked one size icon and decided to scale down them without creating additional sizes for your icon, you just create your one set of icons in one size and just it. You don't have to take care of different variants for different sizes for this icon. And for exporting those icons, it's super easy, you just need to pick formats. If it's JPEG and PNG, then you need to pick scales, for example, it can be X1 and X2. And also, if you're going to export a CSV file or PDF, there are some nuances, so I will cover them in the next video. As you can see, icons are super small, but they do really big things. And if you like this video, please press thumbs up, share, subscribe. And if you love creating icons, please drop a comment. I would love to learn more about what's your favorite part of uh, icons creation. And my next video will be actually about exporting icons to so make sure that you align with your engineer and your engineer can thank you for that. Thank you so much for watching and keep designing.